What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches create additional revenue streams. Stop trading time for dollars. Um, we hold you accountable to your biggest goals with a step-by-step roadmap. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only. Today, I'm very excited. I've been hearing this name for years and years and this company for years and years. Joe Barton, he's founder of Barton Publishing. It's one of the top digital publishers of natural health solutions and home remedies with over 1 million books sold. It includes the best-selling Diabetes Solution Kit, the flagship natural health newsletter, Home Cures at Work, and the publisher of Whole Tones Healing Frequency Music. And Joe was a former accountant who founded Barton Publishing in 2004 from, I love the description, Joe, is from a tiny basement office, no windows, probably no light from the outside world, on a farm in the middle of Minnesota. Right. Right, Joe? 10 square feet. <laughs> 10 <Yeah>. square feet. <laughs> Can you even fit in a seven? Can you even fit in a ten square feet uh, room? Yeah, it's very narrow. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's literally six foot by seven foot, I think. And I take, had whiteboards in there, and I had a corner desk, and that was it. So take me back. I want to go back to two thousand and four in that tiny office. What was going on in your world? So I was, uh, you know, just kind of transitioning from my career as a CPA doing. Uh, taxes and financial statements and things like that and dabbling in this internet marketing business that uh, was just kind of like wild west so I was um, you know like I had different websites like get rid of ladybugs.com get rid of ladybugs yep (laughs) what did that do like Uh, so like living on a farm a lot of uh, farmhouses get invaded by these Asian lady beetles after uh, after soybean crops are harvested because the lady beetles were brought in by the government to control the aphid population, apparently. And, and then uh, the soybeans get harvested, and they look for a place to winter, and farmhouses are nice and cozy. And so I came up with a report uh, to help people uh, get rid of them. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a crazy niche. Yeah, and that's kind of what got me started. Like I was studying, like, you know, find a problem and provide a solution, and that was like the first problem that I you know, came up with that I could probably help solve. So I just, uh, yeah. What was up. the, what was the farm experiencing that, that problem? Yeah. Yeah. Our house like home from work one day in early October and, uh, and it happened every year, but I had never thought of it as an opportunity. I always thought of it as a nuisance, but I'm like, Hmm, I don't know this happens at my mom's house and uh, other people's house. So I'm sure other people would want to get rid of these things. Cause there were, our house was just covered with them. Like one really? day after. Yeah. So, no you know, idea. So does yeah. that site still exist out there? What was the what uh, was the domain? Yeah, get rid of ladybugs.com. You can still buy the ladybugs. Do you still own it? Or, oh yeah, yeah. Really? So like three copies a year, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it pays for the hosting. <laughs> right. Get rid of ladybugs.com. So were you at that time when you say transitioning, were you still working as a uh, CPA? You were? Yeah, there for the for 2004, that whole year, uh, like I launched Ladybugs in October of 03, and then I started kind of replicating the model with um, like kidney stones, get rid of kidneystones.com, get rid of gallstones, UTI reports. So I kind of replicated, duplicated the model over and over, selling these ebooks that help solve these problems. And, and then uh, refluxremedy.com was the one that put me over the edge and like. So by the end of 2004, I was making three times more really a ebook business than I was as a CPA. So it wasn't a hard decision to quit my job and, and do that full time. That's amazing. So well, what made you start dabbling in it? Uh, so my wife and I, we have four boys right now, and she was working full time. I was working full time, and um, 
after our second boy was born, we they were both going to daycare, and we just had like one of our goals was for her to stay home with the boys and not to send them to daycare. So right. we took a step of faith and said, well, she'll stay home with them, and uh, we'll we'll make this work. So we just really went on a strict budget, and even on a strict budget, I think I was making like thirty six thousand dollars a year at the time. And raising a young family, we had a new, you know, new house on the farm, and it's uh, a lot. Yeah, so it was pretty tight. So I needed to make some extra money, and that's when I just started looking for other things. And actually, selling stuff on eBay was where I found the concept of people selling eBooks. Mm. And uh, that's I started dabbling with that, made a couple hundred bucks a month, and then I learned you can have your own website, buy Google Ads from AdWords, and uh, just kind of kept you know rolling, rolling it. Uh, that way. So. That's amazing. So it all started with get rid of ladybugs.com. Who would have known? <laughs> but yeah. you, you have a personal, I mean, health, like it seems random, right? A CPA talking about, you know, kidney stones, UTI. But it started um, when you were a teenager. You told your parents you would help tell the world about an apple remedy that saved <laughs> yeah. your dad's life. What's this yeah. apple remedy? Talk about that. So, yeah, my dad, when I was three years old, my dad went into the hospital for surgery for an ulcer, and uh, I think it was caused by stress or whatever, and at the time, that was what they did for ulcers is surgery. They don't do that anymore, but some somewhere in the surgery, they botched it a bit. They cut into, like, mm. something as lining, and it, it produced, like, a leak of bile into his stomach, and oh. so every night he would have just bad bile reflux. And That's horrible. Yeah, and there was really nothing that he tried that worked, you know, different medications, propping his bed up at night, uh, various things like that. Uh, so 10 years he suffered with this, and then he just, like, realized one night after sleeping through the night for the first time in years, he traced back, well, what did I do differently? And he said the only thing different was eating an apple before bed that night. Hmm. So he tried it again, and as long as he ate an apple before bed, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, they say, and, and that was true. So uh, my mom, like, said, oh, man, we've found, you know, this is this is a million-dollar idea here. So she wrote some letters, and this is, like, total blue-collar family. We don't know how the world works at the time. And, and so she wrote some letters to some big pharmaceutical companies and said, hey, we've got the cure for acid reflux, and it involves, uh, you know, a secret food ingredient <laughs> or whatever, and... Well, be happy. She to was a, she was a master copywriter. She was oh, already yeah. writing letters, <laughs> <laughs> and she actually did get a response from one of them, which is surprising. What they say? Well, they basically said thanks for your letter, but unfortunately, you know, we can't uh, patent a natural food substance, so it's really nothing we're interested in. Which I don't I don't know. I never actually remember reading the letter. That's just the story that I was told. Right. But somewhere in there, it gets a little fuzzy. But it's like, well, someday <laughs> we'll tell the world about this, and you know. And you were thinking that from a young age because you saw your dad go through that? Yeah, not consciously, but subconsciously thinking about it, I guess. And more after the fact. Like I, I remember us talking about that, and then 15 years later, or probably close to 20 years later, then refluxremedy.com was born. And, and uh, now if you search like remedy for acid reflux on Google, you'll see Apple come up, whereas before it never was popular. So I kind of feel like that was a contribution that we made to... You know, all of society that, you know, less people are suffering from that now. So that's amazing. Yeah. That's true. I love that. Um, <laughs> so, were you have growing up, were you having to help maintain a farm? What was it like? Uh, my wife grew up on a farm. Mm -hmm. So, I, I just kind of lived in the suburb of the Twin Cities. Yeah. And, uh, so, you're representing with all the Minnesota hockey gear there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big Vikings fan, Minnesota Wild fan. So, um, yeah. My wife's. A farmer so that's how we ended up living on the farm so yeah the, you so you know right now what was the process for you to create products so you start with the ladybugs right but then you yeah. branched off to a lot of health stuff so what was your process yeah. um you know really in my background wasn't in health my mom was always kind of dabbling in natural remedies and different things like that she she was kind of like your uh, you know, grandma with the, the old folk remedies type of thing. And right. so that's what kind of, and she called me one day after the get the ladybug site was up and she's like, Joe, I just went to the chiropractor and he told me about this crazy remedy for dissolving kidney stones. You know, I drink a six pack of Coca-Cola and pureed asparagus. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so that's, uh, I did some research and I 
found that remedy listed on some like you is that know, an actual remedy like is that yeah true? it's like this old remedy pureed that, asparagus with it pureed asparagus yeah and uh, apparently it, like the coke isn't that big of a deal it's more the amount of liquid that just comes in and it like rushes your kidneys and then the asparagus is a diuretic that flushes it out so um, I do think there's something there with the coke that helps like to uh, reduce the sharp edges of a kidney stone because if you look at a kidney stone they're like this massive sharp yeah glass ball inside you that you can just imagine how painful that would be so but uh, I've so, definitely seen videos of like coke eroding like just eating away right. at nails or something so i'm yeah, sure right. it can take out a kidney stone no problem right yeah exactly so but, and the cool thing is like a couple years later i met dr scott saunders uh kind of a randomly uh, i don't believe in coincidence but you know we sat down for breakfast at a marketing conference and we hit it off and mm -hmm. he ended up becoming like our our chief uh, medical officer for the company and kind of and he said like yeah, I use that remedy with my own patients, and it works great. So he kind of put the validation and credibility to all these remedies that we were putting out there. So there was a couple of years I was just like, it's working. We're getting good feedback. We put it out there and, you know, didn't really have a whole lot of legal compliance uh, concerns at the time. So <laughs> so what was the decision? Were you looking for someone at the time, or you just met Dr. Scott, and you're like, this is yeah, a perfect just, fit? Yeah, just I wasn't looking actively. We just happened to go to Evan Pagan's Get Altitude conference and yeah. and uh, sat down for breakfast. And he was looking for help with marketing and business, and I was looking for you know a doctor to help give some credibility to what we were doing. So we partnered together basically. So so when you have someone come on board like that, um, what do you have them do? So in his case, his is a little different because he was, you know, practicing at a, at a clinic and had his own business and that type of thing. So uh, what we agreed to do is he was going to write a couple articles for, well, this came a, a year and a half later, but he started writing a monthly article for us that just talked about topic of the month, whatever that might be with home cures that work. And now we've had, uh, I think, 100 issues now since January 2009. And then we use him, so it's more of like a licensing agreement, sort of, to be to use his um, name and picture and story on our websites. So I got some advice from Perry Belcher in that regard, actually, because Perry went through uh, some legal nightmares where he, <laughs> I won't throw him under the bus, we'll just say he said, Joe, just make sure you use a real doctor and, and uh, hire somebody, so, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And so how do you decide which one to go next? Like, so you, obviously I could see the acid reflux one and the, you know, because that helped your dad and, yeah. um, how do you decide which product? Yeah. Um, some of it was market research, like just going to Google and looking up like how many people are suffering with various things and, and that, um, you know, going to Barnes and Noble, checking out magazine racks, that type of thing. So not a real, uh, scientific process necessarily but just kind of good old you know market research putting yeah. something out there seeing if it gets traction and if it does you scale it so that's kind of what we did with diabetes because I didn't really have a great story necessarily for our diabetes product but I knew it was a huge market it was a growing market of you know and a, a pretty serious problem for people that you know can oh, die very from serious. It, so. yeah yeah and high blood pressure was the same thing just a big market for it so we just put our uh, heads together and came up with the product and uh, put the copy together and, and worked really well. So, how do you decide, Joe, on um, the medium, like a ebook opposed to like an audio as opposed to a video? How do you decide on that? Well, the ebook was the simplest one, just because it's a digital file. There's no cost to fulfill it other than hosting on a website. Uh, you can deliver the link through email, so it's all very automated, and that was a big part of why I started, or why I love this business model, was because I could set something up once, and it would just continually sell all through the night and that. So, um, and then you know, shortly thereafter, I partnered with a guy who offered the printed version of all of our products, and uh, and offer that as an option and found out that 50% of our uh, customers wanted both, you know, the digital mm. download and the physical copy. Right. And we continue to see that even, you know, 10, 12 years later that uh, it seems like the 
printed book isn't going to go away anytime soon that, you know, that I'm seeing. So is there demand yeah. for like audio or anything like that or not really? A little bit. I mean, um, I think with ours, it's more like, you know, we've got like recipes or, you know, here's your step-by-step mm. thing. And so to have that in front of you, to hold in front of you and, and uh, I think is valuable. So they can follow it. Yeah. Audio book has, I mean, we saw, we do have some books with audio, but it really hasn't taken off much at all. So, so talk about the birth books. of whole tones. Yeah, How did that come about? Books. Michael Terrell and whole tones. Yeah. Yeah, so Whole Tones, uh, Michael is a real good friend of mine that we met um, about eight or nine years ago now, and he was, he used to be like a traveling minister, preacher, uh, church guy, you know, he was, he played guitar in the rock, Christian rock band, Mylon Lefevre and the Broken Hearts, and that was the biggest one, I think, and uh, some other ones, and so he's just a really talented musician, and a super huge heart for people and for the kingdom of God and uh, that was his passion and and he also had like this when I first met him he he you know knew what I did with health and so he's telling me about all these different uh, weird alternative health ventures that he's been on in his life talking about Tesla coils and uh, hyperbaric oxygen and uh, all sorts of just different you know backdoor kinda you know health people that he knew that were helping people with all sorts of things and so um, and then just you know our fr- as our friendship grew he was telling me about how he'd been studying the Psalms and the song of uh, David you know back in Bible days and uh, the story how he met this piano player in, in a Jerusalem coffee shop and uh, and basically was handed like uh, the the key <laughs> to, right yeah he, I, he's uh, told me the story that it was like yeah. a random occurrence yeah. at a Jerusalem coffee shop. Right, yeah. And so I didn't really know what he was talking about. Like, he was like <laughs> saying, like, I've got whatever, you know, this is going to help heal the world and all this. And so we were actually at an event in uh, New Orleans in uh, 2014, February. And I said, okay, Michael, whatever this is, what's it going to take to actually get it done and get it out there and, and to help the world? And so he's like, oh, that's easy. We just need to, you know rent a studio for a week or two and hire a few musicians. I got friends that, you know, all these musicians and that's it. Just get me in the studio. And I'm like, okay, so what's it going to cost? And, you know, I pencil it out. It really wasn't much at all. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. You know, it's just kind of like, uh, let's get this done. And for me, it's like more out of curiosity and, and I that's was willing to use that thing. Yeah. So, yeah. What, what intrigued you about it? What was, it's, His it's sort of like metaphysical, yeah. right? Like you can't, like you're, so you still, okay, there's diabetes, there's a problem, you know, there's yep. diabetes, there's a solution. This seems a little more esoteric. It's a little woo-woo, I guess. Yeah, you so say. what yeah. what attracted you to it? Yeah. Uh, just knowing Michael, I would say, and the genuineness of, of him and, and uh, knowing that there was something there to it. And but I, I just kind of sensed like, God put us together for a reason so that my strengths and giftings could be matched with his and that yeah. together we could maybe make make something work. So it was really just kind of a, a risk, like a step of faith again. And so I said, all right, let's do it. I you know, wrote the check. He booked a studio in Dallas, got his people together. And you heard the story. You know, They sat down in the studio. He said, all right, drummer, you do this. A violinist, you do this, keyboard, do this, I'm going to do this, and let's see what happens. And, like, first take, 22 minutes, 22 seconds, song ends, and they just, like, sat there and, like, you know, couldn't believe what happened. And so uh, it all came together. And so they just did all seven songs in seven different uh, frequencies, and, you know, it was done in a week. He sent me uh, an MP3 download of the songs, and I started... I played it on my uh, living room, you know, stereo system for the first time, and I just pushed play, and I'm like, "All right, here we go. What did I invest all this money for? <laughs> Let's see, you know." And a little skeptical, and uh, but then I pushed play, and I just like got this flood of emotion came over me, like I could mm-hmm. feel there's something in that music that was just powerful and healing and cleansing, and so I was just like floored, and I'm like, "All right," and it took me like. Even my team, like Marty, you talk to Marty, he, he was a skeptic at first. He's like, Joe, what are you getting this into? Isn't here? he a part of the skeptic society? Or yeah. you know, I mean, he's like actually an official skeptic. 
Oh, really? I don't know about that. Or but... no, sorry. Someone in his mastermind group is yeah, like I think it is as part of the Skeptics Association. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So he, you know that might have rubbed off on him a little bit, but and I was you know as well. I didn't know what I was getting into, but. You know, it's so good to have some skepticism. You know, yeah, you look at it with a more skepticism. careful eye, I guess. Right. So we just went, you know, full speed ahead. Like, let's get this produced. And uh, in October, he had a live event and launched it in Orlando. And then on Black Friday, November, we launched it online to our list. And uh, the sales were unbelievable uh, at first. Like one of the best launches we've ever done wow. um, for any product, not just our own. And then we started getting feedback from customers, and like that's when we realized, wow, we're really onto something because, uh, like, you know, just huge miraculous stories uh, from like physical healings and all sorts of things like that. But even, but more common was like the emotional uh, healing stress relief, just a sense of peace, people saying like they feel like they're in touch with God again wow. and getting out of depression and funks and, and things like that and it and it just continued to come in like all the every day, you know, we we share testimonials with our team now, uh, just to kind of remind us of why we're doing this and, and just to celebrate a little bit of the bigger purpose of it. So it's not just because we're, you know, making money in that, but we're actually making a big difference in people's lives. Yeah. And a lot of people's lives. So yeah, if people want the full, like, long, longer version of the story, they should probably on Inspired Insider just check out um, or search Michael Terrell's name, uh, T-Y-R-R-E-L-L, -L, I think it's spelled. Um, yep. And that will tell, like, actually some more details of the whole tones. I'm curious, Joe, from your standpoint, I would think it'd be hard to sell something like this. Yeah. Um, because it's not like a problem, solution Mm -hmm. um, why do you think it was the biggest one of the biggest launches? Um, How do you structure it so people just, understand like what it is so that they get it? Right. Right. You know, on on our website, uh, people can listen to the samples of the music. It's a minute and a half long samples of mm -hmm. seven different songs. So, yeah. <clears throat> and that combined with the story of you know of Michael's journey, and then also seeing the testimonials from other people. Um, relating it to all sorts of different things, and I think people just put put it all together and decide like, I want this, I need this, you know. Right. And, yeah. Where can people check it out? Holtones dot com. Okay. It's W H O L E T O N E S. Okay. Yep. Um, I mean, there is also there are whole tones, and then there's um, you go to like store dot barton publishing dot com. They can yeah, find I think out. Yeah, dot com. They're all the store is linked up top. Okay. Uh, different things. Nice. Also, we're on Amazon. We actually sell quite a bit on Amazon every day, which really? it's kind of become, I think it's rated number one in the new age relaxation. It's amazing. Three or four different categories for for that. So That's unbelievable. I'm charting on uh, Billboard, you know, I think we were number three on Billboard new age chart for wow. uh, on Christmas time and uh, when we launched our lullabies CD. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, like, so yeah, the yeah. lullabies. Yep. That was a decision too, right? Yeah. Yep. So what made you release the lullabies version? So that was, uh, you know, we heard a lot of people saying that whole tones helped them sleep, but then other people would say like some of the drums would startle them and they'd wake up in the middle of the night. So <clears throat> it's like, could you please make a version that doesn't have the drums? And so Michael's like, oh, sure, you know, no problem. Well, and he just went into the studio um, uh, about, when was that, April of last year, I think, and recorded um uh, you know a whole new set of six new songs 30 minutes each and all lullabies and and uh so it's focused for sleep really so. that's really cool um i want to talk about you know what's really important and i gather this from talking to marty talking to michael and to you is you know core values yeah. are really a way you run your life and your company um mm -hmm. and you were talking you know before we got started is you've tweaked some of them Yep. Talk about uh, original and then the tweaking. Yeah. So uh, Marty was actually kind of the champion of this. I think so core values are really just something that is core to who you are and will never change. They're just a matter of identifying them and then using those as kind of like your North Star or your guiding like for making decisions. And so <clears throat> our original seven were um, 
honor God, uh, help people, practice what we preach, uh, be fruitful and multiply, which was, you know, in each of these I can explain more and I have the yeah, yeah. interview, but um, over deliver, make it fun and simplify. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, those were just kind of like, as we talked about them, like, yeah, this is who we are. This is kind of what separates us from everybody else. And, uh, and we do make decisions based on those things. And so, um, and then, like you said, we did change those recently, uh, which we could get into a little bit more if you yeah. wanted. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're going, I, mean, how, I guess before you talk about the tweaking, yeah. um, were you, did you just do these things and one day you're like, you know, we should really figure out and define them or, did it just did you do that from the beginning no it wasn't it wasn't from the beginning it's, it evolved over time i'd say and and marty again was kind of the champion of like getting this onto our website and doing that interview that we did together and yeah. so we just sat and talked kind of like you and i are doing and uh, recorded it talked about each one and and uh and then we would incorporate that on our team like our weekly meetings with the team or daily huddle calls even, like somebody would say, you know, how did you practice uh, core value today? And they mm. would share, you know, like I made my wife a sandwich. and Right. No, it's good <laughs> though because most people, it's like on there, sometimes it's on pages as a placeholder and it doesn't yeah. get discussed on a daily or weekly basis. Um, yeah. It's not top of mind, you know. Right, yeah. So that, that helped a lot. So, um, and yeah, but like we would get, we get, you know, we've got a, a pretty big list, email list, and so we're in, a lot of people with products come to us and say, hey, we want you to promote this. And it's like, well, yeah, you and, and everyone else, so <laughs> what differentiates that, you know, why should we promote your product? And so we look at, you know, does it work? You know, do you have proof of it? Um, and does it align with our, our core values? Does it really help people? Or is it just the next late latest, greatest thing that's going to make us, you know, a lot of money? Because that... You, you know, we no, you notice that one of our core values isn't to make a lot of money. That I mean, it was uh, to be fruitful and multiply, which is a component of that because without yeah. a profitable business, you can't do what you're doing to help people. So, yeah. uh, but we don't just promote things because it's going to yeah. make us money. So, yeah, you're in uh, it for the long haul. Yeah. Yeah. So what's been tweaked? So we went through a process recently uh, through this uh, we're, we're doing what's called Traction. It's an entrepreneur's operating system, EOS. It's based on a book by uh, Gino, Gino Wick Wickman. Yeah. They have a rocket fuel. I think uh, yeah. rocket fuel, which is, which is great in Traction. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we've been implementing that for the last six months or so. And nice. part of the process is uh, going through your core values and and we were like, ah, we're good. We got our core values. And he's like, well, let's just for fun, let's go through these and and talk about them and so the exercise that they have you do is they say pick three people from your company like the top three you know a player stars that that you just if you had a hundred of those people you could do you know you could conquer the world with right and, and then so you, we identified them you know named them and put them on the board and then I, okay next part is what is it about those people that those what characteristics do they have that mm you know, sets them apart. Mm. And then we list all the different things. And then we kind of, all that's up on the whiteboard and then we refine it down and it's these bullet points. And so, and we realized that some of our previous core values were more aspirational. Um, and some of them were also like more permission to play. Like you have to, like you don't have to necessarily say you have to have integrity as a core value because that's just like, you can't even enter the conversation. Right. Of integrity. That's like an so, assumption. Right. Yeah. So, so we, so we got rid of a couple and we tweaked a couple based on that. So our new ones are, uh, we, we kept the honor God. We changed it a little bit to, to basically, um, be like having a kingdom mindset, like a higher purpose. Hmm. Um, so like, I like that. So do you yeah. call it like the kingdom mindset? Yeah, I call it the kingdom mindset. That's, that's your new book when it comes out, your, <laughs> your biography. Right, it could be. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, and uh, you know, which is, it kind of puts honor God in a little bit more perspective. Like, you know, like when Jesus came, he didn't come to, um, I mean, 
he came for a lot of different reasons, but the main thing when you look at the Bible, Jesus came and preached the kingdom of God. And the good news is that there is a kingdom of God and that we all can be a part of it. And it's like, um, so, you know, that's kind of what that. It almost gives it like a broader approach. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And so so the next one was help people. Kept that one the same. Um, The third one was interesting. It's uh, GSDR, which stands for get stuff done right. And that's when we looked at our people, we realized like, these people, they just get stuff done and they get it right, you know. And, uh, and we just realized, like, that's a big part of, of yeah. uh, what we love about what we want in our team is uh, not, well, and this ties in with the next one. Um, I haven't finalized what we call it. it. Currently is posititude, which is a new word, but it envelops uh, fun, positive attitude, uh, low drama, you know, that type of thing, and just, like, having fun again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's just like get stuff done have fun low drama like just knock stuff yeah. out have a good time together yeah and our last one was uh win i have to look over to my whiteboard over there because i forget but uh win like that's actually like one of the reasons that i get up in the morning is just because i like to compete and to try new things and see what's working and that comes into all sorts of different areas like split testing our marketing offers and improving constant improvement of uh personally and and professionally and business wise and, and that so so wins like people want who they just want to be in the arena and compete right yeah yeah mm-hmm. so and and they say you shouldn't have more than five core values because i mean you could have a list a lot more but you really it's better for messaging to boil it down to three Do you have five. five we have five or seven okay so you we used to have seven now we have five we quit okay. at win yeah, because uh, we added simplify to our old list, but by adding one, you're like not simplifying. So, <laughs> <laughs> like the very thing we put on our list is right. not allowing us to to do that. Um, yeah, because yeah, I think on the original video, like you guys do a long, really long, really nice um, video on the core values, um, you and yeah. Marty. And um, one of the reasons is seven. You chose seven for a reason, though, originally. Like, yeah, yeah, they tell you to boil it down to five, but you chose seven for a reason, right? Yeah, seven, I mean, is maybe a more spiritual slash biblical number. It's like how many days in a week and how many days of creation, mm-hmm. that type of thing. But, uh, yeah. I mean, you got to cut simplify out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal to keep it at seven. So Yeah, I love that. No, that's, it's really interesting how, you know, you have a, you know, a successful company, but you're always improving. You're always tweaking and trying to make it better, even from the core values um, yeah. component. Um, yeah, sometimes that gets me into trouble as you try to, you know, try to improve something that might be a sinking ship. So polishing the deck mm. of Titanic, you know, but uh, it's a process of that happens. What to, <laughs> that what happens. To improve and what to get rid of and things like that. So the other part we talked about, Joe, was the systems like the part about the traction is not just you, you tweaked um you know the core values but you're really heavily focused on the systems can you talk a little yeah. bit about that sure yeah so part of the traction system is um uh well let me just i'm going to bring it up so i can reference it yeah and i won't be completely making or you know uh, flying by the seat top of my head, but. i mean it's stuff you're doing regardless <laughs> uh, i'm really curious because this is like, you know, the non-sexy stuff that actually right. makes things work and makes things yep. so that you can focus on other things or improve other things because you have right. those systems in place. So that's why yeah. I'm really interested in hearing your, your take on this. Yeah, so it's really um, it's a system of like planning uh, what you're going to be working on, um, to, to, um, dis- discovering or talking about what your issues are and putting those down on paper so that you can get them out of your brain. A lot of entrepreneurs struggle with, they got a million things going on in their head and it's taken up valuable real estate in there. And so just to be able to write it down and know that I'll get to this eventually, you know, and we'll just talk get about it, out. it. Yep. Get it out. So <clears throat> one of the key things for us that we've found with the system is the, they call the level 10 meeting and you can go, you know, go to their website or YouTube and, just L10 meetings EOS and learn more about this. But it basically, it's a weekly meeting with your management team 
where you talk, uh, you set a specific start time and a specific end time, and you have to start and end on time. Um, you've got the first 30 minutes is like six different sections where you're talking about uh, personally share some good news. You just a little camaraderie, everybody kind of getting on the same page. And, and then you talk about uh, the numbers scorecard. You see you, each person will have two key metrics in their business that they're mm. accountable for. And those are the numbers that you, you know, you just say, are they on track or off track? If they're off track, then you might want to move that down to an issue for discussion later. But you just move right down the list and, you know, you're, and it takes time to come up with what those key metrics are. But eventually Once you, you hone them out. in, that's probably it's like the most important thing you could do, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Was it, is it hard to, like, what would be an example of a key metric? So uh, for me, I've got um, one of them is top line revenue. Hmm. So it's like I kind of know where we no need to pressure. be at. Yeah. No. <laughs> You're yeah. in charge of top line revenue. Right. Yeah. And, the, and I'm the owner of the company. So like I don't have a lot of day-to-day -day type of things that I need to be focused on too much. But um, And then another key number that I have, which is I've never heard of anyone else doing this before. But um, So I – through this system, I hired uh, a president to run the company, and they call it an integrator, which is what that right. Rocket Fuel book talks Fantastic about. Fantastic book, yeah. yeah. Would you yep. say, so did, when you did the score, were you a visionary? Yeah. I'm a visionary, yeah. Because you, I mean, I don't know, from looking at everything you've done, it almost feels like you could be an integrator also. But Yeah, so but not. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a rare breed in that I'm both, and I think part of it was because I had to be both, and mm. so... And I was it's not your happy. natural way. Yeah. So like when I started my business, I was happy as a clam, working on my own, you know, running the whole business myself. I didn't have to manage people or hire, fire, that type of thing. Yeah. Then as the business grows or, you know, and like you, you can't keep up with everything, then you have to hire people. And that's when I realized like I'm, I'm good at it. People like me as a, as a, to work for in, in that, but um, I didn't love managing people because I'm kind of a softy when it comes to holding other people accountable. And, and like, if somebody doesn't do what they said they were going to do, I'm a little too soft. And so I, <laughs> that was more of a discovery process recently for me to realize, like, I, I'm kind of a good cop and you need a bad cop to come in and say, hey, what's going on? You know, your numbers are have been red for four weeks in a row here. Or right. what's, you know, talk to me. And I'm so Steve comes in and he can play that role and I can go back to my, you know, working on special projects or yeah. visionary type of things, which I love. So was yeah. that hard for you to do that? Cause you let go of some of the, the <clears throat> reins a little bit. Yeah, it honestly wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, no, I'm, I've always been pretty good at delegating and I mean, we've got a team of 15 people. So I've delegated a lot over the last six or seven years to a lot of different people. So at first it was a little bit more difficult. For sure, because you you always feel like you can do something better than anybody else. Because yeah. and you probably, in a sense, you can. But if somebody else can come in and do eighty percent as good, and you do that five or six different times, then you've all of a sudden, you know, you're accomplishing a lot more. So yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I love that. Yeah. So the, any other discoveries in the systems wise with the company yeah. that was a breakthrough. So and so it continues to break down like you have your issues and then you really dig into discover like talking about what is the real problem here and then you try to solve that and then be done with it and move on to the next issue because if you just discuss and discuss and discuss you're never really solving problems and, and gaining any traction that's why they call it traction so <laughs> so you turn you'll turn issues into smaller to dos which are typically something that one person can do in an hour or less. And then mm. that goes on somebody's list. And then at the end of each level 10 meeting, uh, each person will have several new to do's. And then by the, a week later, those to do's should be, should go to, to done, you know, right. off the list. So it's like a scrum methodology yeah. type of yeah. system. Yeah. We, we kind of meddled with scrum a bit, but we've ran into some roadblocks with that because that's more geared towards like, like coders software and development yeah 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 so. but essentially you have a more like to do doing done type mm -hmm. of like right. board yeah 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 i like that um the you know uh joe for 
this business, it seems like there's been an upward trajectory, right? Mm -hmm. What's been a challenge or a roadblock that would be important for people to hear about maybe they will experience in their own business or they are now? Yeah. Well, boy, every day there's new challenges. So uh, for us, like uh, I've realized looking over the years, uh, we've had to re, re um, what's the word I'm looking for? redefine ourselves or whatever each year it seems like because we're faced with new challenges like one year we lost our google account and we couldn't i couldn't advertise on google anymore like the the blacklist and so but because of that then we launched our joint venture affiliate program and that like made up for it that creates an innovation time. because right. you, yeah yeah and then so it's like every year it's like we lose one thing and we gain another so now we're doing a lot more on facebook this year and and so it's just kind of ebbs and flows. That's flow. interesting. I like that because yeah. that inflection, when something happens, it almost, oh, again, like someone like you in that company rise to the occasion and you just figure yeah. it out. So like it turns into something that probably is better in the long run. Right. Um, yeah. So there was the Google you know, joint venture. What else, what, what else did you see like an inflection of roadblock, but then it springs up? Yeah. So <clears throat> something we face a lot now is the rising cost of advertising and increase in com competition and so when you look at your bottom line numbers like for us it's your visitor value earnings per click um, average order value those types of things we continually have to raise our numbers just to stay in and compete and to be able to afford uh, buying advertising so that's like a constant um, like shell a battle. Game in some ways and you have to you're you know, you have to comply with all sorts of other outside policies, and sometimes you don't even know what they are until after you've broken them. You know, yeah. And so reinventing ourselves, and uh, and you know, a lot of times we can't come up with solutions at the time, so we have to look to look somewhere else. And so, and one of my current challenges is like, you know, we when we launched Whole Tones, um, one of the unintended consequences was our uh, our main ebook business with Barton Publishing sort of went like this. It went took a nosedive, and uh, philosophically, the question was: Did it take a nosedive because it was trending that way already, or did it take a nosedive because Whole Tones now got all of our attention as a team? Right. You were focused on Whole yeah. Tones and not as much right. on the other thing. Yeah, and so I think you know it's like what came first, the chicken or the egg, and and uh, I'm pretty convinced that it was our focus you know was taken away from the other ones so now like our challenge is how do we how can we stay focused on three Both. different things and yet also have one cons coherent team and so we're trying to segment that out into like all right this is a separate business it's got a separate brand project manager and that's all they're responsible for and then this is a separate business one person in charge and same thing and so Eventually, we mm. can scale that, but now we're hitting like uh, challenges in that regard, like how to actually do that on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis, and you know, and there's competition for who's competing for the copywriters' time or who's competing for the operations mm. team or the tech guys, and so, and then it's like, oh, and we have a budget for all this, like you know, I only have so much. Uh, money I can allocate to everything, and who's gonna? How am I gonna allocate that? Right. So, yeah, the allocation of time and money, right? But it yeah. sounds like you have the solution, which is like you're just gonna almost treat them as separate yeah. businesses instead of kind of it's all under one roof, even though it is. Yeah. But they're all yeah. kind of separate. Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Just kind of uh, getting started doing that now yeah. and and uh, building up to that. So. Yeah, I mean it's a good problem to have because whole, you know Whole Tones obviously was wildly successful and is so. It makes sense to focus time and, and energy on that, um, but I could see how then the lack of energy or focus on something else—it's yeah. it's natural. It's a natural yeah. law. And uh, with Whole Tones, I don't actually own that, so we have like an exclusive distributorship licensing agreement with that. And so that's another one of those things. Is like if I owned Whole Tones, if that was just my product, I would probably like launch that thing to another level but at the same time i have to kind of protect the business as a whole and so it's got to be diversified head, yeah hedge your bets diversify a little bit so we're actually launching um 
a skincare company with, mm. a, with another lady who invented this really cool product that's frequency based um, uh, skincare and with like a magic wand type of a uh, applicator type mm. of thing that enhances the the material or the you know the ingredients uh, really reduces wrinkles. It's got a clinical trial behind it, so we're kind of doing that uh, similar to how we did with Whole Tones partnering. But I do have equity in that company too, so it's a little bit different. Is it something you can talk about, or is it like still yeah. in the works? Still in the works. Uh, we're just finalizing like the naming and the design. We are renaming it, but uh, the 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 old brand. You're the marketer, so yeah. <laughs> you're like that's not going to cut it. We need to rename. Yeah, this. it's called True Energy Skincare, which it was okay, but it needed a redesign. Like the packaging itself wasn't great, so we're like, well, if we're going to redesign it, let's look at you know, can we improve the name itself too? So uh, we're we're going with Resonate Beauty. Like and, it. Uh, which kind of, you know, it's a beauty product, uh, facelift product, and it, you know, I hear people say, oh, that resonates with me all the time. And mm. non, like, the word resonate actually has more to do with sound and, and sonic uh, characteristics and not, like, that resonates with me. But Well, that sounds I, like there's an application component to this. <laughs> How do you decide on that? Was that just, that's just the best method to, um, to use it? How did we decide on what? Like to actually have an apple. You said there was like a way to apply it as opposed oh, yeah. to like she, can. Well, so Dr. Kathy, that she's had this product already for years and she was selling it to, she's got her own clinic and she sells it to her, uh, her patients already. So, and she's done some work. She actually worked with uh, one of the former sharks from Shark Tank and hmm. uh, actually, well, his brother, I think he had it as a long story, but they did a launch on TV, but they didn't talk about the resonating part, or which was like the USP to it's it. It's like Sonicare toothbrush, not talking yeah. about the like bubbles that get between yeah. the teeth. Yeah, exactly. Great point. So, so it, it didn't do good in their first go around, uh, but you know we feel like you know we've got this has got a lot going for it, and there's a lot of synergy with whole tones and the frequencies, and seeing how that has really taken out like the market has accepted oh, yeah. that as so that yeah. sounds like uh i mean obviously whole tones is resonate i mean the true definition right, right? yeah that is a frequency yeah that's awesome yeah joe thanks for sharing that um so i have two last questions um thank you for first of all this has been a blast um i first i want to point people towards where should, they should check out more we talked about wholetones.com where else should we point people towards so they could yeah. find out our main website is bartonpublishing.com. That lists all of our products. It has B A R T O N publishing. Yep. Right, yeah. And uh, yeah, that'll list all of our current products. And then once we launch the uh, Resonate Beauty, that'll be linked on from there as well. And people can join our mailing list if they want, which, you know, if, if we got entrepreneurs listening, like, you can see kind of how we do things on a daily basis through our emails that you know might be helpful. Yeah. It's not marketing related, but you can kind of like uh, you know work things backwards and see how we yeah. do it, working with partners yeah. and different products. So. And everyone has family or friends who have health issues, so you should definitely oh, yeah. check out. You know, look at their site, and there's acid reflux, there's a natural brain, there's diabetes, there's blood pressure. Obviously, yeah. we talked about the whole tones, and then there's a couple, the Remedy Library from Dr. Scott Sanders, um, the Rocket Fuel of Youth uh, kit, ADA, ADD, ADHD solution kits. You have a bunch of really yeah. cool, um, pro and that's only like one page. There's like several yeah. pages of this stuff, so I encourage everyone <laughs> to go on, and you know, for me, like I'm biased, like I like natural solutions to things when there's a, there's a time and a place for other stuff, of course, but when you can do a natural solution, you know, that have the body heal itself, it's, you know, I prefer that for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know? most people do, especially entrepreneurs that think outside the box, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Jude, last two questions. Um, yeah, and there's actually a ladybug removal report too, so <laughs> in case right. there's someone, you wanna be the one of three purchases this year, you can purchase that, but you know, cholesterol. Let's get report. that up to ten this year, shall we? Come yeah, on. let's get it up to ten. So I'm just gonna buy nine for you being on here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, the cholesterol depression. So yeah, check it out. You have everything on here, actually. Fibromyalgia, flu. Secret. 
Yeah, so the secret is buy one report and then go through our upsell funnel and you can take the upsell for home cures that work. That'll give you access to every other report we have, yeah. all included. So that's the deal of the century right there. This is that's awesome. You know, I as a kid, Joe, used to page through the book of home remedies. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that was just an advertisement to buy more of their products. I just that's used that genius. as Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Um so last two questions, Joe. One, um, what's a big milestone you're especially proud of in the business? Like if you look back, you've been in this business for over a decade. Mm -hmm. What's something that, that makes you especially proud? Uh, I would say just the longevity that we mm -hmm. are still here after 13 years because I've seen a lot of uh, businesses and friends that have kind of come and gone, sadly. Yeah. You know, like something will happen and they weren't able to weather the storm or whatever. Mm -hmm big challenges so um, yeah just kind of a uh, resilience I would say and able to adapt I guess um, and you know it's especially important to me is that my four boys are all grown up and my oldest is graduated high school this year mm. it's just to be able to see like I've been able to be here for them uh, going to all of their uh, you know, yeah. school events and sporting events and, and home, you know, when they need, uh, whatever, they'll come in randomly and I'm surprised they didn't come in and, and, uh, knock on the door. We want them on the, yeah. yeah. So what is, what is he going to do after school, after high school? My oldest is going yeah. to go down to, uh, ORU in Tulsa. So he's, he's going to start in a, uh, business major. So he's actually two of my, my oldest two kids have, uh, um, an Amazon and an eBay business now selling whole tones. So that's awesome. They're learning I was thinking, like, forget college. Just like <laughs> they have this thriving um, yeah. education, like with you. So what yeah. do you? I'm curious. What do you suggest? Obviously, you're an entrepreneur. You you want them to do be entrepreneurial and have kind of control of what they do. What do you yeah. tell? What do you tell him now that he's so, off to college? Yeah, so I, you know, I, I tell them I want them to do what they feel like uh, they're called to do or are gifted to do or whatever they're interested in. So like my oldest is very much like he's a social butterfly, a very strong leader. Um, you know, just everybody loves him, but but he's you know he's um, he'll get up in front of people and talk and and share things from his heart and just an all around great guy. And uh, and so he's gonna flourish in college. I know he'll connect there. My my second oldest is uh, he's like really smart, but he's not disciplined or organized. But he's like brilliant, and he'll he's got a YouTube channel, mm. CMS Productions. He and his buddies will mm. do these <laughs> five minute videos and very creative. We'll have to link it up in the yeah. show notes. What's what's the link? So. CMS Productions on YouTube. What is know. it? EMS or Z? Z ZMS. ZMS. Yeah. Oh. It's three buddies, or he and his two All right. buddies. Well, it's a link up ZMS Productions. Yeah. <laughs> So I could totally. What kind see of videos them. are they? Oh, uh, they'll like. So he likes to go to like uh, thrift stores and find deals, and so they will have video of them going in, finding deals, and then using it. You know, whether they buy a scooter or they'll buy a, a hat or I don't That's know, funny. just random. It's very random, and it's a bunch of you know, fifteen, sixteen-year-old boys just being boys. So. so he's creative, the creative yeah. type. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't see him necessarily as a traditional going off to college, getting a degree type of thing. I'll see he'll probably go to college, but it'll be more for the other reasons, just social, you know, because that's what everybody does type of thing. But I could see him totally um, coming up with the next, uh, you know, Facebook invention or something crazy, you know, that we don't know. Right. You know, will ex doesn't exist yet, but he'll. He's creative. He'll. Yeah. He'll think and of something. He'll, Yep, and it'll be because of his, you know, uh, willingness or preference to live outside the box and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. That's interesting. Um, cause, because they grow up with you and you're, you know, what your situation is non traditional, you know, right. in a sense, right? So yeah. they don't, that's traditional to them. Like what right. you're doing is normal. Right. <laughs> right. Good point. But as opposed to before, which is if they saw you in the account, you know, on the accountant role, yeah, like what they see for you is no, that's their normal world, right? Right. So I'm really they're curious still, of yeah. what they their perception of the world is different from probably most yeah. people. Yeah. Right. It's it's 
I think through their friends and, you know, they hang out with their friends and see their families and they realize, like, what normal probably looks like for most people yeah. for the most part. And so I think they've got a pretty good understanding that, you know, we're non-traditional and this isn't normal, right. but, and it, right. but it opens up the world of opportunities for, you know, what can be done. And, and sometimes, like, people don't want this type of lifestyle because it's a lot of risk-taking and unknowns, uncertainties. And, yeah. And, uh, which is fine. Some people just aren't wired that way. Yeah. So last question, Joe, is um, you have a really um, a cause that you are, you know, it's close to your heart with yeah. foster children. Yep. Can you talk about what, you know, what that is and, and what that looks like in your world? Yeah. yeah. Thanks for asking. So um, five years ago, my wife became the director of Royal Family Kids Camp. Mm. Yeah in South Dakota, which is, it's a nationwide organization based out of California. It started 25 years ago, <clears throat> and uh, basically it's a bunch of volunteers that get together and host like a week of summer camp for foster kids, mm. and foster kids, and so like... All starts, over like just in that area, or how does that... Yeah, so yeah. for us, like um, her camp had 52 kids last year ages 6 to 12 and we stay they they do it up at a camp on a lake and um, you know it's 75 volunteer adult volunteers that are all pre-screened and all that and uh, but we you know they do crafts games eat meals with them and the whole goal of that week is just to let them have fun and be a kid and not have a worry in the world because it's completely right. opposite of what their normal life is you know they and it's kind of Heart wrenching on you know Friday when you have to say goodbye, and you know like uh, some of these kids are going back to some hard situations yeah. where they're living with uh, foster parents. Yeah, can or, you talk about that? Like, yeah. I mean, you've experienced that, but what what would be like a situation that? Because you've probably heard all sorts of stories, right? Of what their right. their actual situation they're going back to. What's yeah. that look like? To give some perspective. Uh, so these are kids that a lot of them have gone through uh, sexual abuse, um, physical abuse, neglect. Um, a lot of them would have parents that are drug addicts, alcoholics that just, you know, aren't good parents at all and, and make yeah. bad choices. And, uh, and then their kids, yeah. you know, face a situation where things escalate and then the cops come and take them and they get put into a home, basically. So. Yeah. And then how old are the kids at the camp? At like, the camp, they're ages six to twelve. Yeah, and then uh, we we founded a new organization called Fostering Hope. It's mm. FosteringHopeSD.org, <clears throat> and that was to create well a couple different purposes. One is we put together uh, the funding to buy a camp so mm. that we can host these camps. That's awesome. <clears throat> and that's uh, Fostering and Hope SD like South Dakota dot yeah. org. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and, but we also created a couple new programs to help the kids after they um, are outside of the, that week of camp. So there's three different programs. One of them is to do like a quarterly reunion where we get all the kids together, play games, kind of just reconnect, you know, so it's not just once a year. <clears throat> and then uh, the other thing we have is a mentoring program. So after somebody is 12, they graduate from the, the week-long Royal Family Kids Camp, hmm. but now what are we going to do with them after that is is what we're trying to answer, and that's where we do mentorship. Because you just don't want to send them home and be like, okay, yeah. like, here's a week, like, good luck with yeah. your life type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that program alone does change people tremendously, but yeah. then to be able to support them with, uh, like, life skills, like, we spend, we'll do, like, a weekend retreat with them where some of their adult leaders will come and just kind of spend time, you know, teaching them, like, you know, here's how you uh, manage your finances, or here's how you cook, or here's how you right. talk about different issues that maybe that most maybe a dad would talk to them about. They don't have a dad in their life, so that's yeah. everything. So it's really kind yeah. of like a brother program in some ways. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, just every little step helps a tremendous amount. You know, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, what situation do they go back to? Like, some of them have to go back to the normal <laughs> situation, or do they go back yeah. to like a foster home or? I would say the majority are um, actually half of them get adopted into good homes, which is great. Um, 
the other half are kind of either between bouncing back and forth between foster home and their own birth parents yeah. or they might be in like uh with grandpa and grandma or aunt and uncle something Some like that family member yeah yeah it's usually a not a horrible situation yeah. Any means. yeah but i mean those kids sustain a lot of trauma and that trauma is tough for the rest of their life sometimes yeah yeah yeah. yeah, it's a lot of things that, you know, when you see something, you can't, it's really hard to unsee it, and especially with sexual abuse, things like that, mm. like, you just hear some horrific stories that just breaks your heart. It's so, horrible. Yeah. So, yeah, people can check out fosteringhopesd.org. Um, yeah. yeah. Joe, thanks for sharing that. I just saw the <laughs> movie Lion. I don't know if you've heard of it or seen it, but it reminds me. I haven't seen it yet. It's, to... yeah, I mean, it, it's, it kind of show some of the crazy um, things that happen when kids don't have the proper home life situation they get put in situations is that they shouldn't be put in at a young, young age so yeah. um, but you've seen it real up close and personal with these yeah. camps so um, is there any way people if they want to help contribute or help in any way um, I don't know when they go to fostering hope sd.org what yeah yeah, they can go there if they want to make like a financial donation. Uh, we're always looking for help, and that money gets put to to help these kids develop the programs. You know, help support the camp, things like that. Um, yeah, that's that's great. And and I'll just say like to have a bigger purpose as an entrepreneur, I think makes another is is a big difference, and it's another reason to drive you. It's a to, huge why. Yeah. 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 And uh, it goes beyond, you know, we, we still feel like we're making a big difference with our products, but to be able to go, you know, in a different capacity and it just like it's a community coming together and uh, <clears throat> yeah, it just, it just has like a, a higher purpose that yeah. drives you in a different way. So. Is it something you do every year? Like are you actually or do you get a bunch of volunteers yeah. there or how does that work? So as the husband of the director of the camp, you can imagine that she puts me to, to work. And uh, so I've been a, I've been like a, a guide to, you know, the kids in the past where there would be one guide with two kids. It's a uh, small ratio. I've also done like the music ministry part of it. Uh, and I've worked in the activity center uh, doing crafts, making duct tape wallets, just hanging out playing Legos with the kids, whatever is needed. So, yeah, do I, they I, only I, allow adults to volunteer or do your, your boys sometimes? Uh, 16 and up. Yeah. So okay. my, my oldest son has done it twice now. And then our next oldest will be doing it for the first time this year. So hmm. yeah, it's, it's cool. It's really like my favorite week of the year. It's, it's hard because it's 24 seven nonstop, you know, go 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 but it's so rewarding and fulfilling to see the kids just be kids and you know you're making a big impact on them so yeah, yeah. it's cool joe thank you so much i really appreciate it everyone should check out bartonpublishing.com or holtones.com or fostering hope sd.org so awesome thanks yeah, joe. This is great thank you jeremy yeah all right what i got you can't buy it resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a honey